Welcome to Grace Point. To those who are online or are with us in the house, we want to say welcome. We want to thank you for spending your time with us this morning. So before we get started, we're just going to do a new song. It's called Great Jehovah. And I just wanted to teach some of it to you guys this morning. So this part goes like this. Great Jehovah, ruler of everything. Sing it together. In great Jehovah, ruler of everything, in our defender, you are the most high king. Pretty simple. I know you guys will get it. We're going to clap our hands this morning. First verse. Before there was life, you were seated on high. From there you spoke time, and we were already on your mind. Can't explain your love with our performance. You called us your own, couldn't afford it. So with your blood, you bought our freedom. Can't explain your love. You bought all our freedom. Can't explain your no, rule of everything. Ruler of everything. Worthy of all.
morning we're here to worship the Lord, amen? So we want to invite you to sing this next song. I'm pretty sure you all know it. Sing it nice and loud. We're here to worship our true king.
together here we are so here i am to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say say that you're my god oh you're all together lovely all together worthy all together Wonderful to me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, we want to be like you, Jesus. So here we are, here we are. Oh, glory to you.
Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God deserves all the glory. Father, we are so grateful for your love and for your majesty. Lord, as we sang this morning, day and night, night and day, let our, let our praise, let our voice, let our hearts sing and make music to you, Lord, because you deserve the glory. Father, we are grateful forever for your love and for your mercy. We will give you all the praise and all the honor. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, church. We want to welcome those who may be visiting for the very first time, whether you're in the house or whether you're online with us, joining and streaming online. Now, if you're in the house right after service this morning, if you can kindly go to the lobby to your right, we have a welcome center. Pastor Floyd and the team should be there after service. We have a gift for you. If you have any questions about the church, ministries that are going on at the church, we'd be happy to answer them for you. And if you need prayer, that's another place to connect and receive prayer as well. Now, if you're streaming for the first time online with us, you can text the word welcome to 845-210-9911. You do that, and we have a way to connect with you as well. And one day when all this is over and we can get back to completely normal, we don't want to miss you not being in the house, and so we want to connect with you even virtually as well. This time, Pastor Jose is going to come. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. How many are really happy? Are you happy? Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Praise the Lord. This is an opportunity to uh, bless the Lord with the giving as well. So first of all, let me thank you. Those who are watching online, those who are, have been faithful with their tithes and offering, you make this possible. I don't know who was with us last Sunday after service. We had four services last Sunday here. Uh, we, we have prayer here Mondays. We got prayer here on Tuesdays. There is groups meeting on Wednesday, youth. We got a young adults. I mean, every day there's something going on here. And it's because of what you do. You know, I've had people in my congregation say, Pastor, you know, I, I can't get involved because of my family and, and because of my job. But at least I could give an offering. I could tithe. I say, you know what? You are part of the blessing. You permit me to do what I do. And you guys permit us to do what we do here. You know, like every Friday from 12 to 2, there is food going out <laughs> to the community here. Amen, amen. And what you saw Sunday, we want to continue that. So we just want to encourage you to keep on giving, keep on tithing. I know the Lord is going to keep on blessing. Praise God. Those who could use push pays, 77977. God is good. Let's call the ushers. Oh, they're here ready. The ushers, are you ready? Let's do a prayer, and then they're going to go out, and they're going to collect the offering tithe. And thank you once again. Father God, we just want to thank you for the opportunity you give us, Lord, Father God, that we could bless you this way, Lord God, that we could be a, a, a part of this blessing, Lord, Father God. I might not be able to give much of my time, Lord God, but what you have given me, Lord God, I want to give back a little to you, Lord God, so your kingdom will continue to go forward, Lord God. Bless this offering. Bless this tithe. Lord, open up the heavens and multiply their giving. Lord God, whatever their needs they have today, Lord God, financially that you will answer according to your riches in heaven. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. Hello, Grace Point family. We are so thrilled to have you here today, whether you're in the building or online. My name is Denicia DeChico, and I am the director of Sunshine. Right now, I'm standing in the hallway of Sunshine Community Nursery and Daycare. It seems quiet right now, but come September, I'm excited to share with you that we will be opening September 9th, 2020. We have put in place safety protocols to keep our children and our staff safe, and they align with the CDC guidelines. Sunshine offers a Christian-based curriculum for three and four-year-olds. We have daycare services, before and after care, and nursery services. Right now we're accepting applications, so if you'd like to enroll your child, please send us an email or give us a call. Space is limited. When I'm here Sunday morning at our nine o'clock service, I love to see the worship team. Uh, the worship means a lot to me personally. 
Um, I feel that the worship team helps me to connect with the Holy Spirit and gets me ready and prepared for the Word of God. If you're musically or vocally gifted, we want to encourage you to come out and audition for our worship team. Auditions will be held September 14th. To sign up, email worship at gracepointgospel.org. In order to respond to the needs of our community, we started a food drive a few months back. We're continuing to distribute bags of groceries here at the church every Friday. This ministry is a blessing to many, but in order for it to move forward, we need your help. You can donate non-perishable items here at the church. If you would like to help more in this ministry, you can help by sorting and distributing groceries. Please contact us at chosen at gracepointgospel.org. In a few minutes, Pastor Floyd will be administering the word. I love Pastor Floyd. Please press in and God bless you. The book of Isaiah tells us that when we see a human need, we should not shy away. We see someone that needs clothing, let's give them clothing. Someone that needs a home, let's open up our doors. And thank God these doors are open every Sunday. And like Pastor Jose said, many days of the week as we open this home to many. Now, we may not all be able to open our homes and invite the, the person that has no shelter to come in. But we all, as the Holy Spirit leads us, are able to give an offering that goes out to help somebody in need. I know that my family and I have been in seasons and situations where we've been needed help and maybe you have too and so it's a wonderful opportunity to again once again this is not our tithe this is above the tithe it's an offering and it goes out for people that need help with their bills people that need help in medical situations people that need help with their rent and that's what we do as a church you know folks I love that there's a food drive here on Friday it was never the government's job to take care of the poor it was always the churches and so this is what we're doing here and this is why we have this offering is to continue to work that Jesus Christ has set up to continue to help those in need. And so the ushers are going to come back. They're going to walk around. And once again, as the Lord leads you and places on your heart to give to the benevolence offering today as we be able to help others. Father, we thank you, God, for everything that you've given us, Lord. Lord, you take care of our needs. So someone may be wondering, well, God, if you've promised to take care of our needs, why are we asking for an offering to take care of people's needs? Because sometimes you use us. You use us to answer people's prayer. You use us. When people are praying for food, you use the church. When people are praying for help, you use your people, God. So, God, as you lead us this morning, I pray that we give and you get the glory. We ask this in Jesus' name. Uh, I'm going to share with you the benediction in the book of Hebrews. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to chapter 13. Two verses are the benediction here, verses 20 and 21. And uh, as we read them, we want to talk about being better equipped. Uh, and I uh, want to challenge you today to realize all of the things that God has blessed us with that we might serve him and minister to him. So here in verse number 20, it says, Now the God of peace, who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the eternal covenant, even Jesus our Lord, equip you in every good thing to do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. So we want to use this, and uh, as I read this benediction, kind of looking back at all of the things that have already been shared in the book of Hebrews, uh, the thing that struck me the most is equip you in every good thing. 
God is an equipper. He wants to equip us with what we need to have. If you're going to play the violin, uh, you need a violin and a bow to go along with it. If you're gonna play a trumpet, you need a trumpet. But besides the musical instruments, you need to practice. If you don't practice, oh goodness. Uh, I started to learn the trumpet. I took six weeks of lessons and I didn't get very far. I practiced a little bit and I can make it sound, but I can't play music. There's a lot of things that go into equipping and we need to be prepared. Uh, equipping means to be supplied or armed with or outfitted or clothed. We need all kinds of things and as Christians, what do you think we need as equipment? Do you need any equipment? You need a Bible, there you go. We need stuff, we need the gifts of God that we might be fully prepared for everything that he has for us. And so I wanna take you through some lists today as to what you are equipped with. And let me just suggest to you to begin with, uh, it says that Jesus Christ our Lord equips you with every good thing. It's actually Father God that raised him from the dead that brought Jesus Christ into reality and then through his Holy Spirit, he equips us with all kinds of good things. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Romans chapter 12, verses six, seven, and eight, and you'll find there one of the lists that we are equipped with. It says there in verse six, we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. So all of us have grace given to us and out of that grace, comes different kinds of gifts. And here, these are more motivational gifts. It's what drives us. It's what we initially start to do when we see a difficulty. And so here they are, prophecy, service, teaching, exhortation, giving, leading, and mercy. And uh, just to give you an example of how this works, if you're sitting at a table, maybe there are several people, maybe these seven people, uh, plus a little boy or girl, and this little boy or girl is drinking some milk, and uh, sets the glass right close to him, and before realizing it, reaches across and knocks the milk over. Well, what has to happen then? Well, let me say that probably the service person will jump up first of all and say, I'll take care of it, I'll clean this up. And then the person that is a giving person, problem. Now I'm fully adjusted, I'm well equipped, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Joe. So the serving person jumps up and says, let me clean this up, let me fix this problem. And the giving person looks and says, I'll go get another glass of milk, I'll take care of that. And the person that is a gift of mercy goes and says, oh, don't cry, don't, don't, don't be upset about this because uh, everything is gonna be okay. It kind of puts the arm around the little, little child and says, you're okay. It, it happens to all of us. I spill my milk a lot. And so that's what the person of mercy does. And once those three things are happening, then the others come into play. The person of prophecy comes up and says, you know why you spilled that milk? You, you put the glass too close to you. And when you went to get something to eat, you knocked it over. And so the person of prophecy has insight as to why it really happened. And then the person that teaches says, you know what would be better? Next time when you finish, don't, don't leave it there, but always put it up here at the top of the plate. And in fact, maybe that would be the best place to always keep it. And the exhorter comes along and says, you know what, you're a little kid and maybe you haven't needed a smaller glass. You, you got little fingers and maybe we ought to have a smaller glass or maybe even a sippy cup would be the best thing for you. Uh, that way, you know, everything will work out fine. And then the teacher comes along and kind of puts it all together, organizes everybody and says, let's get the table set again so everybody can enjoy this meal. So there's different motivations that we all have. And I don't know how you see yourself, and you might see yourself in two or three of those places. If you're a mom, you do it all, okay? Uh, but we have gifts according to the grace that God has given to us. And so here's a list of how God equips us. And they're motivational. It's just a natural response that you have when stuff happens around you. It's more natural the way that God put us together. The next list, if you look in 1 Corinthians chapter seven, 
excuse me, chapter 12, verses seven through 11, you'll find there spiritual gifts. When it comes to the church, we have received the Holy Spirit. In fact, Jesus says, don't leave Jerusalem to his disciples until you receive the Holy Spirit because it's by the Holy Spirit, that equipping that you're going to be able to effectively touch other people in life. Now, these are not things that we kind of carry with us like the last list. This is whatever is needed at the time. And so we don't necessarily carry these gifts with us, but as they are needed, that's the one that we want to bring forth. And so the first one is a word of wisdom. <clears throat> Sometimes we need a word that just cuts through everything and explains why things are happening. The next is a word of knowledge, giving understanding for why things are happening the way that they are. Faith is a wonderful thing, and I know we all need faith, but God gives special giftings of faith from time to time. He just responds in such a way that when we need extra faith, it's like he just deposits within us. And often these are words that are shared. I mean the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. It goes on to the word of faith that we might speak forth to the situation what is needed in that situation. Healing, God wants to heal, but he doesn't heal everybody all the time, does he? But when he wants to heal someone, and I'm, I'm amazed at Jesus when you read the Gospels and you see him going from place to place. In some cities, it says that he healed everyone. Everyone, what a wonderful thing that is. Sometimes he would walk by people that hadn't been healed before and he would reach out and touch them. And with Jesus, he didn't often pray for healing. He just says, be healed, be healed. And that's what took place. When that comes over you and you just know by faith that God is healing somebody, you can speak that word and it shall be done. What great equipment God has given to us. The effecting of miracles. How many would like to experience that? Yeah, sounds all right. Miracles is what we need from time to time. And some things that he does are absolute miracles in our midst. Not that we prepared them, but God is doing it prophecy, something that brings forth the word of God just at the right time. I know many times out in the lobby when you walk by one another and you just stop to chat a little bit. I know this has happened to me. And when that person has gone away from me, I said, wow, I've gotten the word of the Lord today. Something happened in the spirit that I receive what God was saying to me. And I've been encouraged by that thing. That's what prophecy does. The distinguishing of spirits. Uh, let me tell you, in these days, we need a lot of that. <laughs> some things are from people, some things are from the devil, some things, fortunately, thank God, are from him. And we need to know what spirit is coming from because there's so many things out there that are going on that we need to have the distinguishing of spirits. We need to know where these things are coming from. So these are equipment that God gives to us various kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues. It's amazing here that tongues are given yet in the church of Jesus Christ. I remember when I was first born again and I was told, you know, God needs to fill you with the Holy Spirit. So I said, what's that all about? I said, well, go read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13 and 14 and you'll understand. So I went and read it, didn't understand anything. I'm a new Christian, I don't know what this is talking about. But we went to a camp and they invited people that wanted to come and pray for the Holy Spirit to come and so I went and knelt down and prayed, oh God, if you have something for me that I haven't yet received, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I sensed the presence of God in a wonderful way that night and it was just a wonderful experience. The next day, the man was standing up front helping to answer questions of what was going on in our young, young lives. And somebody next to me asked a question, can you receive the Holy Spirit without speaking in tongues? And his immediate response was, no, that's what will happen when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Everything within me kind of sank at that time because the night before I sensed the Holy Spirit, but I didn't speak out in tongues. 
I didn't know what that was about. I went back home and after the camp was over and asked for an appointment with my pastor and I said, can I talk to you? And he says, sure. I said, I thought I received the Holy Spirit, but I didn't have any gift of tongues. He says, well, I was standing near you that night and I know that the Spirit of God was on you. Well, that didn't satisfy me because the Bible says that that's what will happen when you receive the Holy Spirit. And so it bothered me. And I prayed for weeks, literally, <laughs> for God to give me this special thing. I didn't understand it. Uh, and we even had a guest come to speak for an entire week. Every night of the week he was speaking. And so we started on Sunday night, he finished on Friday night, and I prayed every night for about an hour, hour and a half, something like that, asking the Holy Spirit to come and fill me. And I sensed his presence, but it wasn't until the last night. There was something, I don't know what happened, but I just yielded and I went up to pray and I didn't stop at the altar this time. I, our choir had some benches up here and I went all the way up to where the choir was and I knelt down and the Holy Spirit came upon me. I sensed the same presence and I began to hear words that I had never understood before. I began to speak in a language that I had never learned. A few words and then I stopped and said, is this me or is this God? I didn't know. But I went ahead and used those same words over and over again. And uh, God filled me with the Holy Spirit. All kinds of wonderful things are with that. I could go on and tell you story after story. But let me just tell you, to begin this listing of equipment, in verse number it says, in verse number seven it says, but to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Wonderful, and when the list is finished, it says this in verse 11, but one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually just as he wills. And so this listing, we don't carry this with us, but it says the Spirit of God comes upon us and enables us, then we can do these things that bring life to other people in the body of Christ. When we receive a gift from God, it's not necessarily for us. It's for somebody else around us. And if you look at the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, faith and healing and all of that, it isn't the person that receives that gift that gets that. It's the word that is passed on through them as a vessel to the people that need it. Sometimes we get all big-headed about how God uses us by the Spirit, but that's not what he gives it for. He gives it so that we might simply be a vessel to equip and to bless somebody else. That's how he gives the Holy Spirit. So that's the second list. You feel equipped yet? Amen. I do. Some of you are wondering, but it's on its way. <laughs> Let me give you a third list. Ephesians chapter number four, verses 11 through 16. Here's something that is more closely related to all of us. We all have a, a, a list that is motivational. We have a gift there. Sometimes we'll manifest the Spirit. But listen to this. He gives us men gifts here in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 11. It says that he gives us apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Some people look at this as a, as a five-fold ministry in the church, and some look at it as a fourfold ministry. I have a tendency to look at fourfold because teaching is what all of the others before that do. And so here they are. The apostle lays the foundation. The prophet gives encouragement uh, in the words that he shares. The evangelist uh, gives a care for the lost and motivational to get out and to win the lost. Pastors come and mentor and they shepherd and they oversee. And teachers come and explain the word of God. Like I said, the teacher fits in each one of these because the prophet needs to lay the foundation. How does he do that? By teaching the people, as Paul did when he went from town to town to establish the kingdom of God. The prophets come along and they encourage you. They give a word from God and man, you walk out of church that day just saying, I believe I can do anything that God wants me to do. We're just built up by the prophet ministry. Evangelist comes and shares how to reach out and touch the lost. And Many of us go out saying, who can I talk to today? Who can I minister to today? Who needs the gospel today? 
and we share the gospel. And I don't know of anything more rewarding than actually sharing the gospel with somebody that responds and gives their life to Jesus Christ. That's the most exciting thing I think that we can ever do in the kingdom of God. And of course, pastors, I'm one of those guys, uh, hopefully equipping, hopefully encouraging, hopefully uh, mentoring and sharing truth about daily living for Jesus. The, <clears throat> the results of all of this, of the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, is found there in verse number 12. It says they give these gifts to the church for the equipping of the saints. God wants you to be equipped by your relationship with Pastor Dan, by your relationship with Pastor Sal, by your relationship with Pastor Stephanie, even Pastor Floyd. Somewhere along the line, you need to be in connection with the giftings that God gives to the body of Christ. And let me tell you, if you don't have that kind of a connection, if you just come on Sunday morning and you listen and walk out and do whatever you do the rest of the week, not that that's a bad thing, but you need to have more of a response. And we'll talk about that even a little bit later on. But the work <clears throat> for the work of service, we are equipped for the building up of the body of Christ. When we attain to the unity of the faith, all of these things come together, that we might come to the true knowledge of who Jesus really is, that we might become a mature people in God, and that we might come to the fullness of Christ. He gives these three lists. You'd think, wow, that's, that's, that's amazing. That's not the end of the listings in the Bible. I don't have time to go through all of them, but let me give you this next slide. It says, the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter number five. How many have the fruit of the Spirit working in your life? Yeah, that's what we need. God equips us with his fruit. It says there, if you look in those verses, it says love and joy and peace. Isn't that great? Wonderful things that that comes from God. That just doesn't come from you deciding that you're going to be that way. God equips you with his love and with his joy. The joy of the Lord is what the song says. That's my strength. The peace that he gives, not the peace that the world gives, but the peace that he gives. And then it goes on with patience. Hallelujah. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and the one that we all love is self-control. Isn't that wonderful? He gives us the equipment that we need for every situation in life so that we might live abundantly in him. It says in 2 Peter chapter number one, this is one of my favorite parts of the Bible, it really is very similar to the fruit of the Spirit, and I don't have time to go through all of this today, but <clears throat> there in chapter number four, he says that he equips us with his divine nature. Do you know that you have the very nature of God working in your life? That's what happens when you give your life to Christ. He comes to live within you, and he comes to allow his nature to work in and through our lives. And it says in the Bible that he's changing us from glory to glory into his likeness, into his image. And so that's how we're equipped. We're equipped to actually enjoy the divine nature of God. And the verse that I like the most in that, if you read through that list, similar to, again, the fruit of the Spirit, it says, if these qualities are yours, and are continuing to increase, you will never be fruitless. Wow. That sound good or what? We're gonna be fruitful for the kingdom of God because of his divine nature working within us. And then of course, the armor of God. <laughs> Hopefully you've read that in Ephesians chapter six, that he equips us with the armor of God not with our armor, not with what we can do. And when I ever read this, I, I think about <clears throat> David that went out to challenge Goliath. And before he went out to challenge Goliath, the king said, why don't you try my armor on? <laughs> and so he tried it on, but it weighed him down. He was a littler than King Saul. King Saul was a big guy. And so he said, I, 
I can't do it with this armor. He says, God has given me the answer for this situation. So he took all of that armor off and he took his sling, went and found five smooth stones. He says, this is all I need to take care of this guy. He had the armor of God upon him. God prepared him for that time. He even said to the king before, he says, I killed a bear and I killed a lion. This guy, no problem. He knew by faith that God had given him the victory before he took one step. And that's what God wants to do, equip us for our situations, taking down the giants in our lives, taking in and being equipped for all of the things that he has for us. And so there's more lists than this. You can read through the scripture and you'll find list after list after list, but it's God giving you the empowerment, enabling you to do what he's called you to do. He's the one that does that. And so if we go on in the scripture, the benediction, it says at verse 21, he will equip you for every good thing to do his will. To do the very will of God. How many know the will of God for your life? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What's the rest of you doing? We all need to know the will of God for our lives. Sometimes we think, well, the will of God is, is uh, who should I marry? What house should I buy? What car should I purchase? What job should I have in life? Those are important, but is that really the totality of the will of God? I think it's so much more than that. It says in Philippians chapter number two and verses 12 and 13, so then my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Again, it's God that comes and gives us his will, that we might fulfill his will within our lives. Then I've taken and written down a bunch of verses that if you'd wanna just follow and see what the will of God is according to the scripture. It says, first of all, in John chapter six and verse 40, for this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. The will of God is that everyone would come to faith in Jesus Christ. And so if you know somebody that doesn't know the Lord, the will of God may be to use you to speak forth, to pray for that person, and to bring them into the kingdom of God. Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. That's his will. That's his plan. That's what he wants to do. And so we need to get out of our comfort zone sometimes and speak to other people about this kingdom that God has brought into our life. The second one is 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. How are we doing with that one? Every circumstance that God brings along in your life, you can give thanks to God for that because he has a purpose and a plan for what he wants to do in the midst of that. And I think especially when we get into the circumstances where we tend to say, oh me, oh me, oh me. Why is this happening to me? Why don't you start by giving thanks to God that he's still the Lord in the midst of all your circumstances and see what he will do with that. There's an old book that I read a long time ago, From Prison to Praise. And it just says, give thanks to God in all of your circumstances. And it's dealing with prisoners. And went in to deal with prisoners. And they said, how can we give thanks to God? I'm in prison. Well, why don't you start giving thanks to God that you are still alive and that he's given you his word and he has you here for a purpose. People that started doing that started actually getting out of jail. It's amazing what God can do in changing your circumstances if you'll but give thanks to him in the midst of that. Another one, 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 and 4 says, for this is the will of God, your sanctification, 
that you abstain from sexual immorality and that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor. Wow, I think that need to be plastered over every sign in the United States of America. We are living in such a decrepit, immoral world out there that we as Christians, when we come to faith in Christ, need to know that we're equipped to be able to stand against all of the immorality that's in this world. He wants us to know how to control our body. He wants us to control our eyes because it's through the eye gate that many things come in and affect us. I read continually how that men especially, and let me tell you, it doesn't leave out women, of being trapped in immorality because it's like a, a little bit of yeast and it continues to grow and develop until it consumes your whole life. Oh, let me tell you, God wants to give you something special about his will and his will is that you would be sanctified, set apart from this world that we mean not lovers of this world, but we lovers of God. And then we love other people as he loves them as well. And if you love people like that, I think the best thing is when you look at people and say, that is a daughter of God. That is a son of God. And treat them accordingly. Then the immorality and all of the thoughts that come would dissipate and disappear because God has something greater for you. Hallelujah. Keep your body holy. The next one is found in 1 Peter 2.15. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. How many would like to do that? <laughs> Just do the will of God and get out there and do good. That's all you have to do because nobody else is doing good. Find something good to do and you'll find God right there. Ephesians 2.10 says, for this, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. He's already got your life planned out. If we but have ears to hear, if we had hearts that respond to that which he's equipped us with. Hallelujah. Jesus said, greater works than these, talking about his own works, shall you do because I go to the Father. Have you read through the Gospels and seen the great works that, he's, that he did? That's a challenge. This is, I think, the most challenging verse I know in the Bible. Because when you think about all that Jesus did, he says, I came to equip you. I came to put my will within you. I came that you might work out your salvation with fear and trembling, knowing that I'm working within you to accomplish my great will in your life. What a wonderful thing that is. Hallelujah. Well, let me keep going. Still a lot of stuff. It says here, equip you for every good thing to do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight. What he wants us to do is the accomplishments of good works that would bring honor and pleasing to the living God himself. And so if you read the end of every epistle, how many know there are 10 commandments in the Old Testament? How many do you think there are in the New Testament? One, two. Well, there are two. Love God and love other people. But the end of every epistle, if you read Ephesians, the first three chapters are teaching, instruction. The last three chapters is regulation after regulation after regulation as to how we apply that which has been taught to us. And there are actually directions. It says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's not a suggestion. That's something that he wants us to experience. And the end of every epistle, this chapter, chapter 13, has seven direct things that he calls us to do. Not 10 commandments, but seven. Here they are, verse one. Let love of the brethren Continue. Just let it continue. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you is what Colossians says. Let love of the brethren continue. How do you do that? He says if you want to please God, you'll be lovers of other people. Verse number two. <clears throat> it says do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. 
How many like to show hospitality to people that you love and that are near to you? We love that, right? Here's a direction, show hospitality to strangers, somebody you don't even know. You know, what happens in church is we have people coming together like we're here this morning. How many know everybody that's in the building? Nobody, I don't either. What we need to do when we walk out of the lobby, if you don't know somebody, go introduce yourself to them. Be kind to them. Take them out to lunch. That would be an exciting thing, right? That way you'll get to know them. So you don't even know. They may be angels unaware. Maybe amazing people that, that God is greatly pleased with how you treat other people. Find somebody you don't know. Show them some hospitality. It says in verse number three, remember the prisoners. Well, I, I'll pray for the prisoners. No, that isn't what he says. Remember the prisoners as though in prison with them. Ooh, that changes it a little bit. How can I remember the prisoners as though I'm a prisoner myself? I better do something more than just pray for them. I probably ought to go visit them sometime. We have a prison ministry, by the way, here. Did you know that? People every week go down to the jail right downtown, and they go in and visit with the prisoners. I'm not saying that everybody ought to do that, but when I was in Bible school, one of the things that I did is I went down to Cook County Jail every Sunday morning. A lot of strange people there put in, in jail over Saturday night for a lot of strange reasons. But to go and visit with them, tell them that there's hope in Jesus Christ. As though you were in prison with them, what would you like to hear if you were in prison? Wow, I don't know, maybe we better keep going here. It says here in verse number four, marriage is to be held in honor among all, and the marriage bed is to be undefiled. Again, what an important thing is. We have rules and regulations in this country that don't understand what marriage is between a man and a woman. Marriage is supposed to be undefiled. We need to protect marriage more so than in any other time of my life anyway. Marriage is important to God because it's the connection that we have with him. He's the bridegroom and we're the bride. Marriage is very important. That connection that we have with God is so important. It goes on and on here. It says, make sure, verse number five, that your character is free from the love of money. How many love money? Wouldn't raise our hand on that, would we? <laughs> The Bible says not to love it. We need it, but don't let your character just be driven by what your job provides for you because there's more to life than money. Remember the first time I went to a foreign country and I met people that had almost nothing, but they had Jesus. And let me tell you, they were the happiest people I think I'd ever met because it doesn't mean that you have to have a lot of money to be happy, content, joyful, peaceful. It's all there because God's divine nature has been given to us. Well, let me go on. Verse number seven says, remember your leaders. It says, who spoke the word of God to you, considering the outcome or the result of their conduct, imitate their faith. And over in verse 17, obey your leaders and submit to them. Wow, there's that big word again. Submit to leadership. Mm. Is that part of what God requires of us? Is that pleasing to him? It says, for they keep watch over your soul as those who will give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with grief, for this would be unprofitable to the leader. No, this would be unprofitable to you. God gives us direction what to do. And the last thing I see here, the seventh thing, verse 15. Through him, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that gives thanks to his name. We need to be worshipers, folks. I hope you enjoyed the worship today. I hope you were on time. <laughs> let me say something else. I hope you were on time for the worship, okay? Coming on time is getting here 10 minutes before the service starts. That's what being on time means to me. If you're here 10 minutes before, you'll, you'll 
be able to talk with other people. Right. You'll be able to even meet some strangers that you've never met before. <laughs> and you'll be prepared for the worship time. You might enter into all that God has planned for you. Worship is such an important time. That's why we take time for it in all of our services, that we might enter into the presence of God because so much comes from that. So the scripture says, equip you in every good thing to do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight. That's what all of these things do. And then it concludes with this, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. It concludes with this, because he deserves the praise. He deserves the glory of everything that's happened. It isn't us that is the important thing to God. He is the important thing to God. He, Jesus himself. God equips us that we might do his will, that we might allow him to work within us, that we might be pleasing to him. And as we do that, I've drawn a little chart here for you. There it is. God is up in heaven. God is actually joined by his Holy Spirit here on earth. And he equips us with all of these good things that we might do his will, that we might find him working in the body of Jesus Christ. And so we're in the middle there. And the purpose for him giving us something is so that we would give it away to somebody else. He doesn't want us to keep this stuff. He equips us so that we can be active in his kingdom and help other people. And then those little circles with the arrows on it, well, when I receive something from God, I recognize it's for his glory. It's not to build me up, it's for his glory. And when other people receive anything that I have to give to them, they need to understand it all goes back to him. And he is the one that receives the glory and the honor and the praise because he's the worthy one. We're not. He works it within us. He develops it within us that he might be glorified. And so your goal this week is to take and see the equipment that God has given to you. Use the equipment that God has given to you so that others might be blessed. That's why he gave it to you. He gave it so that you might be the salt and you might be the light everywhere we go. Are you ready? Are you equipped? Are you ready to share with somebody else that which God has given to you? Then we've got the message of the day. Let's stand. We're going to sing a declaration and we're going to sing a prayer. So in the declaration, in the prayer, listen to what God yet has to say to you.
together with him. Read the beginning of Romans. That's what it says. He reigns so that you will reign. He has equipped us unbelievably with stuff maybe you've never even considered before. It belongs to you because his divine nature works within you. And so I'm going to pray for you this right now. I'm going to pray for myself that as we go out today, as we go out through this next week, that we'll have ears to hear how God wants to use the equipment in our lives to bless other people around us. Are you ready for that? Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you for equipping us, Lord, with stuff that goes far beyond our imagination. Lord, you designed it all that we might be empowered to do your will, to bring forth that which is pleasing in your sight. Give us that vision. Give us that direction. Help us to see what you see. Lord God, that we might bring others to a place of joy and peace and righteousness in Jesus Christ. Take our lives, Lord, today and use us for your honor and for your glory and for your power to continue to change this world into that which you designed it to be, Lord, a redeemed people that will worship you, 
and exalt in your holy name. Hallelujah. God bless you as you go. Listen to what God would have you to do next. It might happen right here in the lobby before you leave today. God bless you.